Savers are losers. This is one of the first lessons that over 30 million readers worldwide were taught in one of the most successful personal finance books of all time, Rich Dad Poor Dad. And for under 10 bucks a copy, chances are you might have a copy yourself laying around on your bookshelf. But this statement is definitely very polarizing and for this reason has been the topic of heated debate between financial experts for years. At the time though, when I read this book, it seriously gave me a new perspective on the way wealthy people invest their funds as well as purchase assets in order to grow their wealth over time, in contrast to say the middle class and even poorer people who usually only rely on one or maybe two single sources of income to pay for all of their luxury items that they think are assets or even just their expenses in general, maybe being able to save whatever's left over, but that's usually an afterthought. This is the single most important lesson to take out of that book. But when it comes to actually saving money and holding Holding cash, well, it's in periods like right now where interest is running rampant that the statement savers are losers really starts pulling some extra weight. Because at a current interest rate of 7% in December, well, this literally means that $100,000 that's just sitting in your bank account would be worth 7% less year over year. And with high interest savings accounts offering rates much lower than that, the relative purchasing power of your money just sitting in the bank is fading away, unfortunately. Hey everyone, my name's Griffin, and this channel is all about helping you master your finances. So last week I released a video on the channel speaking about a really simple to use money rule that I personally used for years to help me save, invest, and ultimately just set me up financially for when I wanted to leave the government job that I got right out of university to pursue something that I was more passionate about. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. But in that video, I also mentioned the fact that the principles and rules I used for years back then don't even apply to me anymore right now because a lot has changed. I have since quit that job, I've moved three times, my income's completely different, and so are my expenses. And that had me thinking, well, okay, I said in that video that I usually try to save at least 60% or more of my income, but in reality, what is the exact figure and how have I been able to consistently save that much? Which, when compared to the average American savings rate, actually ends up being quite a bit. In fact, this chart right here shows us the average personal savings rate over 60 years. But if we zoom in to say the past 20 years, a lot is revealed to us, where on average, it hovers between usually 2.5 to around 6%, with the exception of this Batman pattern right here over the course of the pandemic when shops and businesses were closed, everyone was stuck at home and the savings rate jumped to over 30% temporarily, even though it has since dropped back down. Saving and investing a higher percentage of your income pretty much just comes down to a combination between your expenses relative to your income. And if we take a look at a bare bones formula for saving, we'll, we'll quickly realize that there are two main variables that we can play with, being the income and the expenses. Now everyone can work on the second variable pretty easily being the expenses by reassessing their fixed and variable expenses but you know at a certain point you can only be so frugal before your quality of living severely takes a decline so yeah there's definitely a line that needs to be drawn somewhere of course the second category that we have a lot more control over though is the income category where we have significantly more leverage available to us and pretty much the sky is the limit with income right so by increasing your primary income source or adding more income sources to the mix this will of course increase your capacity to save considering you keep expenses stable. Otherwise, we can also mimic what the wealthy do by investing our funds to buy assets, which in turn also increases our income and capacity to save and invest more, thus creating a positive income feedback loop in a sense. All right, so I know this is all pretty theoretical, but let's get out of the classroom here and see how this actually applied to my situation back when I had a nine to five with a steady income, because I'm not just saying here that I quit my job. No, this is something I actually did. It is possible if you have enough determination and consistency towards achieving a goal like that and it's really all going to come down to your money habits over a long enough period of time. All right, so this right here is one of the last pay stubs that I got from my work and I was gonna show some of the numbers but it turns out there's a bit too much confidential information on there but uh, I was earning $2,580 give or take bi-weekly which turns out to be just under $62,000 per year which is definitely a great salary right out of university but when you take off all of the taxes where uh, I live in Quebec, one of the highest tax place on the entire planet, turns out that that is, what is it, just under $44,000 a year take home after tax. And when we calculate this and bring it all down to a monthly basis, turns out it's around $3,666. In reality though, it was quite a bit less than this because there were like 10 different deductions from death benefits, insurance, pensions, the whole nine yards, uh, but still pretty good for a 22 year old at the time. 
But with that steady income, it was therefore really easy to try and strive for that 50, 30, 20 income split that I spoke about in the past video, where I was trying to keep less than 80% of all my take home income in my, both my fixed as well as variable expenses and then saving and investing the rest. Really quickly here, here were my roughly expenses per month back then. So rent was around $12.75 per month. I needed a two bedroom, did the whole one bedroom thing, did not fit with the lifestyle considering I needed a separate studio at a bare minimum. Food was around 400 bucks a month because that was before uh, a loaf of bread was like $6 at the grocery store. In terms of transportation, my car was totally paid off. So it was pretty much just gas and insurance at around 125 bucks a month. And then just miscellaneous everything else that will group together around $500 because again, I was just trying to be extremely frugal and save and invest as much as possible. So it all comes out to around $2,300. And when we look at this compared to the 3,666 of that after tax take home income, this equates to around 63%. Of course, some months were higher and some months were lower, but I just had a really aggressive strategy towards saving and investing as much as I possibly could. On things that no one ever, ever needs like multiple magic sets, professional bass fishing equipment. So I was just really delaying any type of gratification in terms of buying clothing, vehicles, anything like that. I was just trying to save and invest as much as possible. And that's really a mindset shift that is important if you want to achieve any type of like financial freedom and trying to uh, go and do something on your own without having to rely on that one single source of income. And then in the evenings when I was getting home from work, it was YouTube channel all the way as well as my other business at the time to again, increase my income, right? Back to the formula from earlier, which ultimately was the most important factor in all of this. Hey, speaking about saving money here, even though the current inflation rate is quite a bit higher than most high interest savings accounts, well, at the very least, we should be trying to get the highest interest rate possible on cash holdings just sitting there. And that's where today's video partner ties in, Neo Financial. That allows you to earn 1.3% interest on funds held within their high interest savings account while also generating cash back on all your purchases using their MasterCard if that's something you're interested in. If this is the first time that you hear about Neo Financial, well, they're a Canadian fintech company that offers unlimited cash back at thousands of partners across Canada at an average of around 4%, which is extremely competitive in the Canadian credit card space considering that this is a free MasterCard. So as a user, you can start earning rewards and cash back by simply downloading the Neo app, searching for partner merchants, and then using the Neo card to make your purchases. You'll also earn cash back instantly after making a purchase and you can cash out your earnings at your own discretion. What's also great about Neo Financial is that as mentioned, it is 100% free to use with no annual over limit or inactivity fees whatsoever, making it extremely competitive in the Canadian FinTech space and it's accepted everywhere that takes MasterCard. When it comes to Neo Financial's high interest savings account, as mentioned, you can earn 1.3% interest on all your cash savings that also offers unlimited free transactions and is completely free to use as well, making Neo an all-in-one place to earn cash back as well as interest. So if you're interested in high cash back and interest on your savings in 2022, make sure to check out Neo Financial using the first link down in the description and you'll get $50 for free when you sign up. Okay, so that's great, but what about today in 2022? Because in the last video I said 60 and then in the thumbnail or title, I'm not sure what it's gonna be yet, but it's probably going to be higher than that once I end up calculating it all. Well, of course, being primarily a YouTuber, even though I do real estate investing on the side, my income each month is extremely variable. And side note, that's one of the worst things for getting mortgage loan approvals. But anyways, that's just a side note there. My income is extremely variable and usually is between like 10 on the lower end to around 30,000 on the much higher end per month, which, you know, again, is extremely variable because ultimately this all comes down to the traction and views that I'm getting on my channel because more views equals higher ad revenue. It also equals higher affiliate income, more sales for my products, as well as also even higher rates for brand deals. By the way, in no way am I mentioning this to gloat or brag. This amount of income is great. It really is, but I certainly did not start here, right? Years back when I was wiping snow off my car at 4.30 in the morning and rushing to work, I did not start at that amount. This is something that was built over time with an insane amount of consistency towards my different businesses as well as my investments. Now, uh, also, when I look up to other peers in my industry, many of them are making over 100K a month or even way more than that. So everything's relative and you should just concentrate on what you can control right now to try and increase your own income. So that being said, if we just say draw a line at $20,000 a month in income, well, yes, over time, my expenses have of course increased, but not at the same pace as the income. 
And it's this right here, being increased income while controlling your expenses, that's the crystal key needed to unlock a higher savings rate, period. Other than, of course, maybe winning the lotto. Looking at my current expenses though, housing $1,800 a month, $1,400 a month in mortgage, and then the rest is like insurance as well as taxes. But let's keep in mind, when you own a house, well, $900 of that each month is going towards principal. So in reality, it comes out to around $950 a month because a mortgage is like a forced savings account. And considering the extremely low mortgage rate at around 1.8%, I think if I remember correctly, well, considering the amount of inflation right now, it's basically like I'm being paid to pay down that loan. From there, utilities around 200 bucks a month, car $600 a month, that's like my big splurge here. And then the rest, we got food at $500 per month with the amount of inflation and variable around $500, meaning total of around $16,700 worth of my income that I'm able to save once all those expenses are paid for. So this equates to just above 80% of the income each month before tax, that is, that I'm able to save. But let's remember what I said earlier that in today's market environment, savers are losers even more than ever in recent history. So although I'm saying that I'm able to save upwards of 80% of my income, well, in reality, what I mean is saving and investing that amount into various different investment classes like index funds, individual stocks, physical real estate, paper real estate. And then I'm also working on building up my crypto portfolio right now to have a smaller exposure to this growing asset class as well. All of which having the goal of maintaining purchasing power by at the very least being flush with inflation, but then also increasing my wealth over time. Hey, in fact, if you're interested in discussing each one of these in more detail, make sure to check out the video I'm overlaying right here. And I'll also leave a link down in the description to uh, four different asset classes that I'm investing in in 2022. So if there's one thing that I want you to take out of this video, it's that you really need to focus on increasing your income in 2022 while limiting your expenses and then staying consistent with those actions towards trying to achieve an income split, maybe 50, 30, 20, but ultimately just an income split that makes sense for you and your financial needs. And I know what you might be thinking, this doesn't seem too revolutionary and that's because it's not and maybe a tough pill to swallow but income is simply a reflection of the amount of value that you're delivering to the market let that sink in for a second if you're currently in a position where you're making say two to three thousand dollars per month chances are you're working a job that isn't necessarily impacting a lot of people and isn't significantly impacting the market while also having your income being fully tied to the time you're putting into that job so just think of a way that you can increase your value to the market in 2022 and this is sure to have a net impact on your income as well as your savings rate for the course of next year and beyond. So with that said, thanks a lot for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments if you did and what you'd like to see more of moving forward on the channel. And with that said, I will see you in the next one.